your cameras off and when we introduce y'all, y'all can come back in. Okay. Yay. We're live. Oh, really? <laughs> Are we really? Oh, goodness. Y'all know I got to start my elevator music first. Yes. <laughs> okay, so we got a little bit of elevator music in. All right, well, since we're live, hey, everybody, welcome back to ATU Live. And for everybody that's new here, welcome to ATU Live. I'm your host, LeBron Phillips. And I'm your co-host, Zoe Stokes. All right, so first thing first, go ahead and grab your phone and copy that link on the YouTube channel and share it to your grandma, your friends, your mom, your dad, anybody you want to share it to, go ahead and share that link to them. And be sure to post a picture of you watching the live and tag ATU Rest Life on Instagram. Doing that will enter you in to win the $50 Amazon gift card that we'll be announcing for the next show. So make sure you tune in for the next show as well. We will also be announcing the winner of last episode. So stay, stay tuned to see if you've won. All right. So today we'll be talking about scheduling classes and changing your major. With the new semester coming up, we thought it would be very important to get, let you guys answer some questions, ask some questions, excuse me. And we have a couple of guests here um, to answer a couple of those questions. And uh, we will go ahead and get them introduced. So first, we have Natari Irving, and she'll introduce herself. And then we also have <clears throat> America Letter Letterman. Did I say that right? America. Hello. Yes, America okay, Letterman. Natari. Yes, you're right. Hello. Okay. Okay. Uh <laughs> So am I introducing myself first? I'm sorry. Yes, you can go first. Okay. All right. Hello, everybody. My name is Natari, and I'm a resident director here at Arkansas Tech. Um, I direct Wilson Hall and Tucker Hall, and this is my second year directing, um, being a resident director here on campus. So nice to meet everybody. Hi, everybody. My name is Merica Letterman. I'm the director of the Academic Advising Center. Um, I've worked on campus professionally for 10 years, and I started out as an undergraduate student here in 2005. So we are going to be sharing some of our own experience with you and answering some commonly asked questions. All right. All right, so to begin, Mary, when, when does class registration even start? Just for starters, I think that's pretty important to start off with. Yes, absolutely. So early registration opens um, on Monday, October 19th. Um, and the way that that um, happens is every certain every couple of days, a new tier will be able to register and mm -hmm. it goes off of your earned hours. Um, and so keep in mind those classes that you're enrolled in right now, you haven't earned those yet. Okay, so we're going off of everything in the past and you can actually visit the registrar's website to see what that breakdown is. But it, it's October 19th is when the seniors start and then it just kind of goes from there all the way until October 29th when the freshmen okay. can. Gotcha. Okay. Um, you just touched on the registration schedule. So why does the registration schedule start with the students with most hours? So it's built that way um, to kind of protect the seniors and the upperclassmen so that they can know that they're going to get those classes um, that they need to graduate. So right, that's that's important that we're keeping students on track to graduate. So they get to pick their classes first because of that. 
Okay. I know when I was a freshman, I hated having to go last for classes. I would think, oh, they're going to take all the good classes. I'm going to be stuck with the 8 a.m. classes. And then you realize, like, okay, we're not in, in, even in the same level of classes, so it'll be okay. <laughs> Right. The the most popular the popular one is like uh, recreation and sports, you know, that everybody always wants the those classes. So those are the ones you might fight over. But most most of the time it really is a non issue if if you sit down and you think about it. Yeah. Natara, did you ever have trouble registering for your favorite class? Well, for a class that you really wanted? Uh, never really any trouble, but I was very really appreciative of being a part of PLC, uh, which is the Presidential Leadership Cabinet, and we were always, like, no matter if you were a freshman, sophomore, junior, or senior, you were, like, able to, um, register for your classes, like, whenever the seniors registered, so, yeah, I was very happy to be a part of that, so, it helped. I need to <laughs> get nice. with PLC. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay. Um, Marika, what do students, um, when do students transfer to like their department? I know there was a point in, I think it was maybe my sophomore year where I went to my department, but what are the actual, what qualifies you to be able to have a registrar, get registered within your department? Okay, so um, the advising model is you are assigned to an academic advisor in the advising center until around 60 hours. So the way mm -hmm. that we calculate that is really 45 earn plus 15 enrolled, and then we're going to enroll you in another 15 so that by that time you're, you're ready to meet with your faculty advisor to talk about a degree audit and things like that. So... <laughs> Um, at that point is when we transition you. And so what we try to do every semester is around after the 11th class day, we will identify those students and we will send an email to the student saying, you know, we've enjoyed you. Um, you're being transferred to, let's say, the engineering department where they will assign you an advisor. Um, and then we also send that list to the academic department so that they can know uh, and hopefully go in through and, and assign them a new faculty advisor. Okay. What do you need to do if you change your major? What do you need to do? Not freak out because it's going to be okay. Um, I changed my major six times uh, before I settled on <laughs> what I wanted to do. Um, and so it's okay to have that worry um, and to not know what you want to do. I would say if you want to change your major, talk to somebody first, even if it is your peers, you know, it's good to, to talk to people and see like, you know, Zoe, why are you majoring in what you're majoring in? And, and you never know. So um, talk to your advisor, talk to somebody on campus who's a mentor. Um, but really the process of changing your major or to add a minor, maybe it's the same process. And the registrar's office has done a, a great job, especially with everything going on. Um, to make that form easy for you to fill out. It's actually on your OneTech. Once you sign in, you can click on your academics tab and it'll be on your right and you'll see change uh, major. And so you can click on that and it's a, it's a really easy step-by-step -step process and it'll be sent and then the registrar's office will change it in the system. Okay. Let me think here. How many times did I... Okay, I started off as nursing. Went from nursing to business. I know that's a very big jump, but I'm scared because <laughs> I don't want to make a C in nursing school and like get kicked out or anything. Uh, <laughs> nursing business. Oh, okay. So maybe three times. Only three times. I thought it was more than that. Um, wow. Was it only three? So did you ever change your major at all? Yep. I started <laughs> out as middle level. And I had the concentrations in English and math. And then I changed to nursing. And then I changed back to middle level. And I did math and science. Marika was there for all this. She helped me. <laughs> She's very good help. <laughs> yes, I did. And you landed right where you needed to be. And you changed your yeah. six times, you said? I did, yeah. Do you remember what so, you changed them all to each time? Oh, goodness, because I'm so old. Um, <laughs> So when I first started, um, I was business education. 
Mm-hmm. And then I took an accounting class and an econ class and realized real quick um, that I was not going to be a business major. And it was mm-hmm. all my fault. I just didn't get <laughs> accounting. Um, and so then I changed to elementary ed at that point. Um, and then I changed to hospitality because my mom and dad own a canoe rental. So I thought, well, if I'm going to work at the canoe rental, I might as well have hospitality. Um, and then I changed to secondary education, but I didn't know what I wanted to teach. So that was kind of a dumb thing. Uh, and then I changed to, I think it was psychology. And then I ended up with sociology with a minor in hospitality. (laughs) because because i could use all my electives that i took in sociology (laughs) and i love the faculty in socio in the behavioral science department they're awesome if anybody's thinking about changing to behavioral sciences um they're a wonderful group just like all of our other academic departments so. so how long did it take you to like finish Actually, I finished with one extra semester, like four and a half years. So, but I did have to take some summer classes, but that's okay. Like, I think that we need, you know, as much as we want you to graduate in four years, it's okay if things happen and you don't. Mm -hmm. It's not the end of the world. Um, You're still going to get out. You're still going to get a job when you get your degree. So it's just, you know, you need to make sure that you're taking care of yourself health wise, mentally and physically. Um, And then just kind of make sure that you're in the right fit. I think a lot of times that people like you were talking about, you know, you come in and you think you're going to be a nurse because that's what you thought for so long. And and maybe you're not as good at chemistry as what you thought and and you're scared to change because it's maybe might disappoint somebody in your family because they want you to be a nurse but it's okay to come to that realization that maybe this isn't the best fit for me and it's okay to go undeclared for a little bit and kind of um do some exploring and um go and meet with career services to see really what you want to do as a job and then decide on your major. I agree. Okay, so what if, which you kind of touched on this, but what if someone is behind in graduating after switching majors? So what I would say is you definitely need to sit down with an advisor, whether it's your advisor in the advising center, or even if you are assigned to us in the advising center, I encourage you to still be going out and meeting with the faculty um, because, you know, they're the experts in the field. We advise on on general education classes and, and your first couple of semesters, but I mean, they're really they're, they're so wonderful to talk to about job opportunities and they want to talk and they want to have those conversations with you. So what I would say is just sit down with somebody and actually put a pen to paper because it might not be as big of a deal as what you think it is. It might take two summer classes, but then you're done with them, you know, and you're caught back up. Um, and even if you are behind, you know, we can we can figure something out um, to get you where you need to be as long as you're doing what you're supposed to and going to class and making good grades. I had to take summer classes for two summers and then this semester I'm taking 18 hours to get caught up. It's not bad. Um, It depends on what classes you're taking. If you're going to take on extra classes during a semester, I think personally, but that's what caught me up and I'm going to graduate on time now. So, and summer classes aren't bad especially if you're not taking them all summer. But even if you are, I've done that too. And it was a good, it was okay. Well, and I think that the we've done a really good job as a university um, making it okay if you have a scholarship and, and classes don't work out. We've really um, allowed students to take summer classes now and, and retain that scholarship and keep that scholarship so that they're not, you know, cause that's a, that's a very heavy weight on a lot of people is that, mm-hmm. you know, if I drop this class, 
or I'm not doing good in this class, I'm going to lose my scholarship. And that's, you know, most of the time, that's just not the case. Um, a lot of the times, fear keeps everybody from actually figuring out what's what the true story is, because you hear things from other students that might not be exactly true. So if you'll just reach out to your advisor, we can walk you through that or reach out to financial aid. Um, they can walk you through that as well. So just ask questions. It's OK to ask questions. Um, Natari, did you ever um, use like your degree map, like kind of like look at your classes that you needed before like meeting with your advisor so you already knew what you wanted? Uh, yes, I did. Only because I think it's just certain classes, especially with sciences. I am not good with sciences. So I, uh, I guess it was like chemistry and like environmental sciences. I was not into those in high school anyway. So I wanted to be sure like if I was able to take another science class, then what can I take? So I looked into like the alternative classes that I could. So I was prepared for that um, advisor meeting. Um, but it's always good to look into like the different classes you are, you are able to take in the different electives. So you don't pile up on your like your elective classes that are harder than what you think. And then the classes that you need for your major, you know, to graduate. And so you just got all these, you know, difficult classes trying to take on. Um, but I think it's very smart to like look ahead before you go into that meeting and know what you want. Uh, just even to make the meeting go shorter, because if you don't you have no idea what you want, it's going to take a while for y'all to figure out like what's good for you, what's best for you. And especially like with the different uh, like organizations, if you're involved on campus, um, I try to look for something that like would help me with becoming a better leader or, you know, becoming more comfortable with like just talking in person or talking like even on WebEx now, <laughs> so, like oral communication, uh, like stuff like that. Like I just found that to be very helpful for me rather than taking something that I wasn't interested in like at all. So I try to look on, you know, my degree maps and, you know, try to figure out what was good for me. So can I ask a question? Have any of y'all reused degree works? Have we what now? I have have you used degree works? Oh, okay. Yeah. Think, so uh, before, yeah. Okay, good. So we have the degree maps and I'm, uh, again, I'm old and I like to highlight and check off. And so the degree mm -hmm. maps are good for people that, that like that, but we have degree works that you can also find on your one tech um, that will actually run all your classes through the software. And it will tell you a little bar, um, the percentage of have how much that degree you have completed. And then it's more of a, a list of classes. So it'll say comp one. And if you've at that. And so I would really encourage people to use those resources um, to plan their registration for the next semester, because really, at the end of the day, it's it's your schedule. You know, we're just here to be a resource. But you you as a student really need to own what classes you're going to be taking. And so I would say use degree maps, use degree works, um, make sure you don't have any holds on your account before you go and meet with your faculty advisor or with us. Um, that way you can get registered when you're supposed to. I think it really helped me because I like seeing things wrote down and then being able to check them off to see like if I've actually completed it or something like that. So that's one reason yeah. I did use it. So I know like I can keep track of what I've done, what I need to do. Um, so it definitely helped me out as a student. Okay, do we have any questions like from anybody that's viewing? No, Okay. Um and sorry, how did you decide to pursue a master's in um college student personnel? Laura? College student personnel. In college student personnel. Is that what she said? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, what's your master's? What are you trying to get your master's in? I'm trying to get my master's in teaching. That's what I'm pursuing my degree. Um, master's in teaching. So that's what I got my, uh, my bachelor's in was uh, secondary education uh, here at Tech. So 
Uh, I want to become a teacher. Uh, recently, I uh, discovered an AVID program, which is like a college preparedness program for uh, students in middle school and high school uh, for that level. So that's kind of like what I'm just gearing towards is becoming an AVID teacher and preparing students for uh, the, their next level of education, or even if they don't go into college, like what else do you want to do and how can I be a resource to do that? Um, I think one thing that really like pushed me towards that was like how I just build my connections now as a resident director. Uh, I love being an RD and I think it's honestly because I get to just bond with college students. And I mean, I know I'm not like too far in age from a college student, but um, just being a first gen, uh, first gen college student and being able to just connect with people and relate to them. Um, that's my biggest strength is just being a relator and trying to put myself in other people's shoes. Maybe sometimes that's my biggest weakness, but um, <laughs> I try to, just, I love relating to people and connecting with them personally, like professionally, um, and just being a resource as best as I can. And uh, that's why I wanted to become a teacher and just try to help people out and students in all different levels and ages and so, yeah. I didn't go the college student personnel right route because I don't know. I've been I feel like I've been in college forever now. <laughs> so <laughs> I just didn't want to stay on the college campus forever. So <laughs> Zoe, did you have any experiences that you want to share regarding changing majors or just registering for classes? Um, I will share my experience with changing my major. <laughs> I, when I started as middle level, I was taking, I think part of the reason I wasn't like enjoying it was because I was taking English classes as one of my concentrations and I do not like English. And I think that the um, one English class that I was in was just turning me off to the whole teaching. And I was thinking, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this every single day, like the same thing. Um, for years and years and years. And so I was like, nursing, I won't be doing the same thing. Um, job security, what well, teaching is job security too, but nursing is like really, really job secure. Um, and I was taking the classes for nursing and I was, they were okay. Like I was enjoying them. I was making good grades, but then I started thinking it, why do I want to do this besides job security? And I did not have an answer. And so I talked to my parents about it. Um, they helped me um, like see that that's not something that I really want to do. And it's not something that I think I would have excelled at and been really great at. Um, and then I circled back to education and because I want to help people. And that's something that you can do with teaching and do it well and so i decided maybe i should just change one of my concentrations and i talked to america about it and she was a big help as well and <laughs> now that i am in math and science instead of math and english i love it and i love my middle level classes i started taking classes like in my major this year and i love it best decision ever but i'm also glad that, that i happy. went good I'm also glad that I, I went through that to see like that's really what I want to do, even though it took yeah. took a there was a fly, sorry. <laughs> even <though> it, <laughs> it took a semester a year to realize it. I'm glad that there was something for me to help me realize this is really what I want to do. So it sounds like I should have went to go visit America when I was <laughs> <laughs> when I wanted to do. <laughs> oh I'm no, I don't think I'm gonna change it tomorrow. again. Nine o'clock. <laughs> hey, I plan on still being asleep. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long week. But yeah, I might have to. I don't think I'm going to change it again. But if I do, I know who to contact. What are you right now? What's your major? <laughs> um, Hospitality, events, and tourism. Yeah, that's good. So that's good. I plan on doing that. Hopefully, I stick with it. And then I might be back for grad school. And then it's time to figure out what that's for. So we'll see. <laughs> That's exactly right. And I, by the way, 
teachers don't get paid enough money. They should get paid a million dollars, especially. We all <laughs> agree on that. We agree. <laughs> yeah, I'm not even school and stuff. Right oh yeah, well. Oh. <laughs> So, Natari, whenever you start teaching and they start paying y'all a million dollars, don't forget about me. Okay, well, that is all of our questions. It is game time now. Game time. And y'all know, let me grab them. Today, we will be playing the revamped version of Finish That Line. But before we get started, um, Mary, Mar Marika, <laughs> thank you for joining us today. You gave some very good information, and uh, we will. I will look forward to having that appointment with you. Well, hopefully, I don't have to have that appointment. <laughs> Me, Zoe, Zoe, Natari. Hopefully, we won't have to have that appointment. But if we do, we look forward to talking to you and getting some advice regarding changing our major and getting registered for classes. Well, thank you for having me. I've enjoyed it. And anybody that's listening or you guys, if y'all ever need to talk about it, just give me a call and we'll sit down and we'll talk about it. Okay. All right. Y'all have a good night. Thank you as well. Thank you, America. Thank you. Okay. So we will be playing the revamped version of Finish That Lyric, Finish That Line, Finish That Line, Finish That Lyric. Lyric. One of those. <laughs> All right, so we will be playing this game. You'll each phrase, lyric, sentence, thing will be 10 points. And then if you can't figure it out from the lyrics that Bailey gives us or that we give y'all us, I'm having a bad day. What's going on with me? Anyways, <laughs> um, if you can't figure it out from that, then the points will go down to five points. And then we'll give you the option of three, well, four different options. So you have A, B, C, or D. We'll list those out. And then you kind of have to match it with those options that we'll give you. So, Zoe and Natari, are y'all ready? Did I explain I that? I think well so. Yeah. Did I? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Zoe, I mean, not Zoe, but I think you should give us the lyrics. Okay. I can pull that. Who's going first? Natari can go first. <laughs> okay. So, the first lyric is. <laughs> So the first lyric is Sin City's cold and empty No one's around to Blank Did you hear that Natari? Since it's cold and empty No one's around to blank Yeah Is that what she said? I have absolutely no idea she says she has absolutely no idea. Does she want the four options? Do you want the four options? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Option number one is love me. Option number two is judge me. Option number three is hug me. And option number four is dump me. Okay. So what's the, the whole thing? Sin City's cold and empty. No one's around to blank. We don't even try to press the answer. <laughs> oh. Do you have an idea? Um. <laughs> I'm convinced that the audience they they look up the answers. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Are they saying the answers already? Yes, but Laura hasn't said it yet. We're gonna get let you do it first. Um. I don't know. Uh. B. She said B. What's B? Judge me. Judge me. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Five points for the time. They all got it. Yeah. Okay. So are y'all looking at that song? I, what song is that? That's um, a uh, blinding lights. I think it's the the weekend song. The weekend song, blinding lights. The new one. Newer, I guess. It's not like. I know that song, but I couldn't have got the lyrics right. Zoe, do you want to go next? Sure. No, I don't. Zoe says she'll go next. Okay. Okay. Good trip, loves it. 
Okay, the second lyric is land in Miami, the sun was hot, blank. What did she, what did she say? Land in Miami, the sun is hot, blank. Uh-huh. The sun land in Miami. The sun the sun is hot, blank. The sun was hot, blank. The sun was hot. I'm gonna need I'm gonna need options. Okay, she wants to do the options. Okay. Option number one is from summer rain. Option number two is from your pretty face. Option number three is from summer sun. And option number four is with sun and rain. Did you hear that, Zoe? Yes. Can you repeat the lyric, like the first, the first part? Um, land in Miami, the sun was hot. Is it the last option? Is it the last option? No. She said no. Well, Dad, damn it! What is it? <laughs> Did they guess it in the audience? No. Nope. Okay. What is the answer? The answer is land in Miami. The sun was hot from summer rain. Wow. That's Sean Mendez. Sean Mendez. Sean Mendez. Yeah. What's the name of the song? Uh, Senorita. 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 Come on now. Okay. <laughs> Okay, Ron. <laughs> yes. Aren't you the guy that tried to hurt me with the word blank? I'm not going to lie. I don't know. Aren't you the guy that tried to hurt me blank? With the word blank. Aren't you the guy that tried to hurt me with the word blank? <laughs> Your words or something? No. Okay, give yeah, me the yes. Hard. But option these are number, hard. And option there's... number one is ugly. Option number two is goodbye. <laughs> option number three is bye bye. And option number four is sorry. And the lyric again is, "Aren't you the guy that tried to hurt me with the word blank?" Bye. Goodbye. Yes, it's goodbye. <laughs> and what song is it? I, oh, oh, my song is it? Oh, oh, me with the word goodbye. Yeah. Period. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, yeah, and sorry, starting again. All right, so. The lyric is, I've got a long list of blank. That's not enough. No, I say groceries. <laughs> no, really, no. I will tell you it's an older song. It came out when you were in high school. She said all it's an older song. School. We were all in high school. Very popular artist. I've got a long Let's list say, of blank. I've got a long list oh, of blank. Oh, they got it. They got it. Veronica Tree. We know you're looking it up, Veronica. Austin we know. Austin says stupid. Austin says stupid. Okay, I can give her the four options. You want the four options? Or it sounds like problems or something. She said it sounds like problems or something. No. <laughs> I mean, yes, but no. Okay, so option number one is past lovers. Option number two is ex-lovers. Option number three is past failures. Option number four is my failures. And the lyric again is, I've got a long list of blank. Is it ex-lovers? Ex-lovers? Yes. <laughs> What's the song? Taylor Swift, Blank Space. Can you sing it? Who a long list of ex-lovers. They'll tell you. Oh, I understand. Wow. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's your turn. Okay. Okay. So this lyric is We'll never be worlds apart, maybe in magazines, blank. I know this one. Oh, what's the exact words? 
Make. I'll mend your heart. I'll mend your heart. No. What are the options? What are the options? Okay, option number one is we will see all the stars. Option number two is we've been there from the start. Option number three is but you'll still be my star. And option number four is but you'll still be in my heart. And the lyric again is we'll never be worlds apart, maybe in magazines. Like. Mm. It's an old, really old song. And you said these would be easy. I tried to make them easy. I guess it, I, didn't it, I know the song, but I don't know the words after magazine. She says she knows. Is it, we, is it we've been there from the very What did you say, Zoe? Is it we've been there from the start? We've been there from the start? No. No. That's gum it. I'm going to get the audience gummit. guess it. Well, look it up yet. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> is okay. it is it umbrella? Is that the song? Is the is song, it the song umbrella? umbrella? Yeah, yeah. The song is umbrella. That is umbrella. Uh huh. It will never be the part. Maybe in magazines. All I can remember is umbrella. By Rihanna. Uh huh. I just don't know the words. I'll never ever be a part or something. We will see all the stars. No. <laughs> Please. It's something apart. No. <laughs> Maybe in magazines, but you'll still be my star. Star in the Because <laughs> when the sun shines, we shine forever. That's it? Yep. I should get some points for that. No, you shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> you what it was. You got all of them all <laughs> Okay, what's my last one? Okay, I'm not going to give you the one that's next because you're never going to guess it. I think Zoe would guess it, but I don't think you would guess it, so I'm going to give you an easy Give me a Beyonce one. one. I didn't put no. on I put Beyonce on here last time, and you didn't even guess it, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, I'm ready. Okay. The lyric is, I want to know, have you ever seen blank? Ha These are so hard. I want to know, have you ever seen uh Okay, what are the options? Option number one is the rain. Option number two is the stars. Option number three, my heart. Option number four, us there. The rain? Yes. What, what song is that? I want to know. Have you ever seen the rain? I don't know that song. Who is that by? I don't know. It's an old song. <laughs> Bailey says this every time. Oh, the game's gonna be easy this time. You might win. The game's gonna be easy this time. You, you might win. It, Did you get that right? No. Yeah, I got it right, but I guess. Huh? How do you know that song, says Austin? Yeah, how don't you know Austin. that song? Austin. <laughs> I'm being judged. I feel like. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay. Well, okay, who won, Laura? That's kind of, that was a tough one. We all won. I think everybody lost. I think everyone lost. <laughs> <laughs> I think that Zoe and Atari were tied and you lost. Oh okay. I don't think that that's right because I didn't get a single one of those right. I got I got two right though. <laughs> yeah, I got both of my right. You so. did. I think Natari won. <laughs> Oh goodness. Okay, so I won. No, I play. <laughs> okay. Don't forget to share a picture of you watching the live stream and make sure you tag A to your rest life to be entered in to win the Amazon gift card. Yes, and make sure you get those entries in before midnight to be eligible. Last episode's winner is who is it, Zoe? Haley Beth three. Haley Beth three. Congratulations. Please DM us your name, T number, and we will send you some instructions on how you can claim your prize. Make sure you guys tune in in two weeks on October 29th. We'll be having a very special Halloween episode 
with special guests, prizes, and a sneak peek of the new Student Center in Hull. We hope to see you there. Thank you all for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you next time. Because hey. when this